Josh, welcome to Real Vision. You are one of the first people who actually taught me what an NFT was. I think your your willingness to educate people is felt by the masses um, in the world of NFT. So I knew from the get go, I had to have you here, especially for this week where the floor price of one board ape yacht club ape is 50 ETH plus. And this week, I think it's 392% up. That's incredible. Welcome to Real Vision. <laughs> Thanks for having me. So it's a pleasure to have you here. Um, I think we need to do a little bit of uh, how it all started and, and how it, it's all going. So tell our viewers a, a little bit about yourself and how you got into the world of crypto. Yeah, I first heard about crypto years ago and experimented it with, with I made a few purchases and even like minted or, or bought some crypto kitties back in the day, uh, I guess 2018. Um, but I really came back in full force uh, last year and this year with um, NBA Top Shot, uh, Zed Run, and then now Bored Apes. So it's been it's been a wild ride. Um, I, I joked uh, the other week at NFT NYC, like how it started was my like corporate headshot as a as a, like marketing consultant, and how it's going is not like my board ape and the full degenerate look. So it's been a journey for sure. I love it. So just to dig a little bit deeper into this, you are one of the early investors in, of the board ape yacht club, and it is. What an incredible collection it is now today. It's one of the most valuable collections of all time. So tell everyone, how did that journey start? Yeah, I mean, I don't want to take too much credit. So much of it was just accidental luck. Um, I happened to mint a board ape the the first night that it was available, and it um, and I saw I saw this you know ape cartoon picture come through my Twitter timeline. Um, and I had been investing there collecting NFTs at the time. And I decided like, oh, that looks fun. I went to the website and I noticed that it was a social club. The art was fun. It reminded me of like the Ninja Turtles or something from my childhood. Um, and I wanted to be part of this like NFT social club and see kind of if we could build a community together. And I looked at the rest of the roadmap and there were some other things like a, like a YouTube channel with like lo-fi music. And that didn't you know, particularly stand out to me, but it was at the time say $250 um, after gas. And I just, I just decided like, okay, I'm just going to mint this thing. I posted it on my timeline. I was like, Hey, I, I bought this thing. Cause it has a social club. Good night. And I went to bed and while I was asleep, you know, this is now like the, the, the history of it. Like, um, who was, it was like Blau and Pranksy and uh, a bunch of others minted like hundreds of apes. And then that started this frenzy and everybody came and they just minted out the rest of the collection. And so, um, I woke up and it was sold out and, and I, I was just like, what happened? And it was at a, probably like a four X um, floor price at the time, which felt really good, at, you know, um, to wake up to. And I had early access to Twitter spaces. So I just started a Twitter space with like board apes, where are you at? You know, I changed my profile pic and I was like, mm -hmm. let's make it an ape weekend. And, you know, Farouk and uh, James and some others were doing the same thing on clubhouse. Um, and they were doing like, you know, this like four day straight, just rolling clubhouse. And I was doing that on spaces that weekend. And it just really kicked off the community, um, was, was a really special time to, to figure out like, what is this crazy club that we got into? People were drawing in the, uh, in the bathroom, you know, there was like a gated token gated collaborative drawing thing where you could kind of graffiti with pixels. So yeah, I, I, I'd have to say like, you know, 60, 80% of that was just like luck being in the right place, right time. But you know, the other side of it is like, I had been looking into the type of community that CryptoPunks had built. I'd been hosting um, community spaces for NBA Top Shot and Zed Run. And so a lot of us joined the community together. And so there was a sense that like those of us who were exploring this crazy world, like, We'll, we'll go into community a little bit uh, later, but your spaces that you talk about is mad, okay? Because it's one of the first Twitter spaces I, that I joined. And I remember so prominently in my head being part of uh, uh, one of those spaces that you hosted. 
and I looked at the the ranks and lines of people that was in that space, and I was the only human being <laughs> in that Twitter space. And I was like, I remember just messaging you, who was the host, and I was like, "Hello, how do I get my NFT?" <laughs> <laughs> And that's just how this relationship has sort of started with you and I. So, okay, that sounds incredible so far as a journey. I mean, let's talk about just God knows just a couple of months, a couple of weeks, you can even say. A collection of apes has auctioned at Sotheby's, you know, celebrities from athletes to the Fallon to to a song coming out by Timberland to some of the really the coolest singers on the planet have the board at Yacht Club Ape, and he took over the bloody Rolling Stones, <laughs> that cover. That image was, was incredible. So what was that one moment when it hit you and you thought, shit, we're all going to make it? Yeah, that's, that's such an interesting question. Um, it must have been pretty early on. I think I would say, you know, so what happened with Board Apes is like they came out, they had a bunch of momentum. And then Larva Labs, you know, the CryptoPunks makers released MeBits and they released MeBits as these like little 3D characters. And that took a lot of momentum out of out of Bored Apes. And so there was for a little while this rivalry between Bored Apes and MeBits. And um, I remember like Beeple made this painting where it was like this giant MeBit being attacked by apes. And, and that was, I think, a moment where like we started to see, okay, like Bored Apes are being recognized as a community and they're being recognized as, as, you know, kind of fighters who are trying to build something special. Um, so was that. I also remember the, disrupt, the disruptors in the yeah. space. And I remember the day that um, so this this Top Shot whale Dingaling. So he, you know, he owns a lot of the top, the best Top Shots. He um, minted, you know, I think hundreds of apes, and then also um, there was a day in the Discord where where the floor price of board apes was below 0.5 ETH. I think it was like 0 0.3, 0 0.4. And people were trolling, dingling, saying like, sweep the floor, like buy up all the cheapest apes and let's get it to like 0 0.5. Um, and somehow they just like convinced him, which worked out really well for him. And so he bought up, I think it was like 20, 25 apes all the way up that were listed oh, from... 0.3 ETH to 0.5 ETH. And basically he set the floor to 0.5 and then it really just took off from there. I mean, now we look back and it's like anybody would love to have an ape at that entry point. But the there was some doubt at the time, right? Obviously there was enough doubt that people weren't buying the apes at that. And so Dingling actually took the collection of apes that he swept the floor with and he um immortalize them into like a fractional you can own a piece of those apes and and he hasn't sold any of them so that was a moment where it's like oh shoot I'm dingling. <laughs> yeah like here goes the rocket so dingling people like some of those some of those moments you know i the there was a there was a late night where um lamello ball the nba player like came into the discord and um, he bought it, like people convinced him to buy an ape and, and he was like showing it off and Steph Curry did that, uh, um, you know, a month or two later. So moments where like people that we admire in culture, like deciding that they wanted to Wait, join so this these community. these people just natu just flow into the Discord channel? Well, you know, they'll sometimes like they'll get an ape and then they'll like come hang out in the Discord and post a photo and just be like, I'm here. And there's always a moment for the apes. Like a lot of us are basketball fans. Like when Steph Curry joined the apes, and we found out about it. It was just like this really celebratory moment because it's backwards, right? Like we were just a bunch of nobodies who joined this community together. And we built, you know, with the help of BAYC, like created something that was so attractive that we have some really cool people who are doing some cool stuff out in culture, um, deciding that they want to be a part of it. So it, it's kind of like, you know the people got there first and then and then now um you know some of the the tastemakers are now deciding that they want to be part of it but um it's you know it's we we try and you know i try not to get too starstruck um you know obviously you know anyone anyone nice is welcome in the club 
uh, celebrity or not. I, I love it. You're, you're like you're like the daddy ape that welcomes everyone on Twitter. <laughs> and I, I recognize that. You're just like, hey, welcome to the club. Um, I love that. And, and um, so let me ask you this. So an average ape could be the price of a house at the moment. So for someone who just wants to get into NFTs would absolutely find this so overwhelming. Where should they start? Yeah, I mean, if we're talking specifically about um, avatar communities or profile pick um, NFTs, you know, my recommendation is like it can be daunting to look at board apes now and even mutants and look at the price and feel like, oh, I can't, um, you know, I, I can't attain that right now. My suggestion would be like find a community that speaks to you at a price that that works for kind of what you're willing to um, invest or, or what you're willing to spend and add your personhood into that community. Because I think that's like every person that joins with, with like their intention is, is, is priceless. Um, because like you, you can't, you can't put a, you can't put a, a floor price on a community of people that are creating belonging to the together and growing and creating a building. So yeah, my, I guess my suggestion is like, rather than focusing too much on having missed BAYC, um, join a community and make the next one. And that may feel daunting, but as like yeah. someone who played a, you know, uh, a role in the growth of the club, you know, I, I watched it happen and it was special and lucky, but also just people being the best in themselves together and that creating some really cool value long-term for, for what this could be. So hop in a discord for a, a project that you're interested in and, and just see if you, if you like, we call them the vibes, see if you like the vibes of, of the chat and, um, you know, find one that you can, you can contribute to. Yeah. I've noticed a few NFT collections. Now they come out and they release and they really have like a sense of purpose to them. And, you know, whatever money they earn, some of the, the collection, the money goes towards an organization or a fund. Um, that's with a good cause. That's something it's most important that you can connect to, I think. Um, OK, so while we're on that sort of beat, um, I know you've probably read the New York Times piece. It says um, about talking about the Border Yacht Club. It, they called you an elite NFT clique whose members own a series of extremely expensive monkey cartoons. <laughs> so I think... My question is, how do you see, how do you sort of keep um, the Board 8 Yacht Club community engaged over time? You know, I'm, I'm curious to to know if there are any potential airdrops or investment opportunities that do come up and, and if they will only be available to Board 8 Yacht Club holders. Yeah, I mean, uh, I think other than the fact that I believe monkeys aren't apes, you know, I understand the caricature on New York Times side to just be like, okay, these are extremely con expensive and they are cartoonish. Um, and I know a lot of people have a hard time understanding that. And you might even be watching, listening this now and be like, I don't understand why that eight picture is worth 50 ETH or whatever, $200,000. Um, but I think, you know, the real value is it's not just about the art clearly. Um, and it's even not just about the community. Like there's so much more that goes into what a value of an NFT is. And, you know, some of that is pricing in of um, future expected future value that comes from, um, you know, BAYC has said it's looking into creating a token um, and uh, eventually may look into creating a DAO, a, you know, decentralized autonomous organization that could have like either NFT or, um, fungible token ownership of, you know, some piece of the club. Um, so there's, you know, there's expectations of future utility. Um, you know, the airdrops that I've gotten from BAYC this year alone um, have been, you know, multiples off of what I initially spent. Um, you know, whether it was like the mutant serum, um, you know, when I, when they did the mutant serum airdrop, I got two M2 serums, which are like the 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 rare one, um, and those are worth what's the floor right now, eighteen ETH or something, right? So like, um, 
that paid for my That's second amazing. aid. And they were just given to you. Yeah, they just, you know, they just showed up in my wallet. Um, and those serums I can use to create a new NFT, which is like a mutated version of my apes. Yeah. Um, or I can sell the serum and people can use it on their apes. And so, you know, I, I love what I love about that, that airdrop, you know, there was a dog airdrop and I think it was in June. Um, Is that the kennel yeah, club? The kennel, so the board ape kennel club, which was every, every mm. uh, original board ape was, was able to claim a dog um, that had similar traits, uh, you know, to the, to the, so to the ape collection. Um, and then now there's the mutants, which were both a public sale, and then also the airdrop of the serums. Um, you know, both of those offered uh, ape holders a chance to have some liquidity without exiting the club, right? If you only have one ape, it doesn't matter what the floor price is if you're not going to sell it. But, you know, having a dog that you could potentially sell and potentially, you know, mint a rare one, um, having a mutant serum that you could also either sell or, or, uh, collect, you could even, you know, if you wanted, um, mint a mutant, keep the mutant and stay in the club and sell your original board ape if you really wanted the, the cash. Um, so, th so those are ways in which I think the club is making it possible to, to enjoy this rising tide, even if you're not necessarily like stacked with apes and able to sell a bunch to, you know, you know, buy your dream house or something. So, I, you know, I think the, if I were to speak kind of candidly about it, like the value that I've gotten from being in the club, and this is like relationships and network has far um, surpassed like what I think I could have gotten anywhere at any point with like selling and flipping my ape. Um, and part of it is because like I'm focused on building like long term IP with my ape in particular. Um, so much so that I realized, you know, the other week that when I Google NFT avatar, the thumbnail for, for that, like Google image search is my, um, forever ape Maui prime, who's, you know, Hawaiian shirt, beanie robot. Um, so, so in some ways, like I accidentally, um, but with, with some intention became a poster child for NFT avatars in general. And, you know, because I'm a marketer, I understand like what it took to get there and, and kind of like getting my ape and certain certain media outlets as the like establishing photo that then Google kind of backtracks. But um, yeah. that's interesting to it's me. Your, like, you know, the, it's, it's your identity, it's your social status, it's your total ownership of it. Absolutely. And I think my ape is much more famous than I am at this point. So so now I'm just hitched <laughs> to my ape and you know, we'll, we'll we'll ride that. That's amazing. Josh, I, I hear the word um, tokenization, um, DAOs. So this leads me to talk about the metaverse next. Um, let's take a pivot because I, I know you are an ambassador um, for Sandbox, who is a metaverse gaming company that has raised over $93 million in a funding round uh, uh, left led by SoftBank. Um, what does this mean for people who are snapping up um, NFTs left, right, and center? Where is this all taking us? Yeah, well, would love to jump into that because that's something that I think about a whole lot. Oh, yeah, a real vision. We offer you the hole to go down in. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, so to me, the metaverse is the future. This is where the world's heading. And, and if I can, you know, step back and define it a little bit, like the metaverse is the kind of umbrella digital world that we're all going to live in. And, you know, I, I think like the, the, the best way to think of it right now is like, is the world getting more digital or less digital? Right. And as we see ourselves kind of entering into more um, expansive digital worlds, like that to me is the metaverse. And it's not just one, it's not one company, like no one's going to own the metaverse. It's just going to be kind of where we end up, living and spending our time and and so that's coming to me it's an inevitability and i think we've seen that especially in the last couple of years um and so like if if it's coming then it's not just a question of when it's like how and that to me is like we're, we're establishing the culture and the values and the principles of what it means to be like a citizen of this new metaverse um 
And to me, like NFTs play like a foundational role in that because NFTs give us the possibility through decentralization and the blockchain to be interoperable between different metaverse platforms. So my example, like I'm happy to be a sandbox ambassador and the BAYC is building a members only club in sandbox. I have land next to it. Um, and at some point I will have a board ape voxel avatar in sandbox that I can use to enter the club and hang out with my other board apes. So I can do that in sandbox. But the beautiful thing about an NFT is I can go over to Decentraland and they're also building the 3D assets for me to also turn into my board ape in Decentraland and then go enter another version of a, of a board ape yacht club in that world too. And the way that the reason why that I think that's like extremely possible is because NFTs, um, they're independent and they're interoperable. And, and so rather than siloed digital worlds, like, you know, my Fortnite character versus my like Roblox assets versus my, you know, Facebook meta profile, um, you know, or my Oculus, whatever, um, I want to see like a world that's interconnected. And right now the best way to do that is through the digital ownership that we can get through NFTs. Right. So I can tell you're a fan of uh, building a metaverse that's open for everyone. Yeah, that's that's the hope. I know you've you've touched a little bit about this already, but if I can just ask you again, how do you see the expansion of Border Yacht Club in the world of metaverse? Yeah, I, I think I think of it as my digital identity just on a personal level, like my ape in particular has really become tied with my identity and, and ultimately tied in, into my, um, my, my digital presence. And for a long time, that's been web 2.0, right. Which is like a, a profile pic, right. When I changed it to my Twitter and, um, my Twitter avatar, or, you know, I use that on discord, like that's really still that social layer of the internet. But I'm interested in how we take these avatars and move into Web 3.0, which includes the metaverse. And so we take um, a much deeper digital identity with us into these 3D worlds and into these, um, you know, these these full environments. So, mm -hmm. you know, I guess, you know, I, maybe I'll change my outfits and my ape doesn't always have to wear a Hawaiian shirt. I can kind of get dressed up and put a suit on if I want to go to a you know, black tie gala in, in the metaverse, but, yeah. but this ape is going to be who I am. And, and that's the hope mm -hmm. as we see more communities flourish is that people can find their tribe and people can find their digital identities, which will be uh, hopefully really creative, right? It doesn't have to be human. It doesn't even have to be humanoid. Um, but we can, we can kind of express ourselves in new ways in these digital frontiers. Wonderful. So I know for the NFT world, community is the heart and soul of everything. And I think whenever I talk to you, Josh, you, you just you have to hold that word very near and dear to your heart. So on a daily basis, I, I see you engage with your, I think, what, 60 plus thousand followers on Twitter. You know, I know you're constantly on a, a Twitter space teaching about people, really engaging about launching the next project, the brand and value of these new and upcoming projects. You really help people sort of guide the light and why they should be part of, you know, whatever community works for them. So the word community, define that for me in the world of Josh Ong. Yeah, for me, it's just about human connection, right? And And creating like, just a, a network of different people who care about each other, who are committed to each other and have a, a you know, ultimately a sense of unity um, around something. And I, I think that was something that we had to explore at BYC where early on there was a concern like, okay, when, when it's this club is only 10,000 people, doesn't that feel um, exclusive? And I think the reality is, by drawing a fence around a community, you give it the opportunity to actually include first. Um, but we have a we have a challenge as a as a, a group, and I think this is kind of like the the animal animal farm story, which is like by making a club exclusive, 
we enable like a type of community that can include, but the goal is to avoid exclusion. And my hope is that communities that that become strong and and connect with each other and, and build a sense of belonging, that the um the the gifts that come with that overflow to society and to the rest of the world. You know, and so what what I want to see is like say BAYC, like a community that is compelling that you want to join, but at, that is creative so that the world can enjoy the fruits of what this club is able to produce. Um, and and so I think that unfortunately, like I think if you without any boundaries around a community, they're actually it's very difficult to create strong community inclusion, right? We're all humans. Like we can say like, okay, we're humans. That's our identity. Like that's the broadest community that we can belong. And that matters, you know, or maybe it's like a national level. Like we're all from whatever country we are, but actually like being able to draw lines. And this is, I think what's interesting about web three is when you have tokenized communities, you have very clear lines, who's in and who's out. And the goal is to allow that to drive, um, connection and belonging and then allow that to go out into the world with um positivity and kindness and inclusion so that's my hope for it you know it sounds very like pie in the sky um <laughs> but that's kind of how i reckon with like what what we're trying to no, build but, but i think that yeah i think a lot of people clearly recognize you know the values that you strongly hold so um and I, I can just sense that you care so much. So what are some of the cool NFT projects that that's upcoming on your radar or whatever NFT cool projects that you're working on? Yeah, I mean, it was a it was a huge honor to work on um, Smilesverse with uh, the artist Wahid um, because his story, uh, you know, coming from Afghanistan, you know, loving streetwear as a kid, but not being able to afford things like Supreme or, you know, Air Jordans. Um, learning, learning just to, um, teaching himself how to be a 3d artist and then putting his work out there, discovering NFTs. Um, it's just a really beautiful story. So the, the project's called smiles verse with, you know, three S's at, at the end of smiles and it's VRS, but, um, his collection, which just revealed, um, you know, over the weekend is just, in my opinion, like instantly iconic. And, you know, I, I hold a bunch of smiles verse because I was an advisor, but the, the fits, the outfits and, and the fashion, I just think are, are remarkable. Um, and the level of detail and just quality that, that what he'd put into his work is really fantastic. So that's something that uh, I'm really excited about. And I think has, has a lot of um, room to grow. Um, a project that I'm working on um, is uh, happiness house. And we're building a um, mental health clinic or mental health um, space to provide resources in Sandbox. Um, and so we've, no way. Um, yeah, so we've partnered with. So what, what, can you tell me what, what exactly does that mean? Like a, a health clinic in the metaverse? Yeah, a, a mental health clinic. So um, what we're trying to imagine is like, as people move in the digital world, like what will they need? Um, and one of the things we want to do is just provide a space where people feel safe and welcome to come and work on mental wellness uh, in the same way that we think about physical wellness or the same way that we think about, you know, um, other areas of our lives. Um, and so we are working with a designer. Uh, we've been we were we we're really honored to have uh, support from Sandbox through their Game Maker Fund um, and my co-founder Satvik and I, we are you know, thinking through what are the different types of spaces that we want to put in. And, and Setfix um, put together a, um, a group of trained um, mental health counselors through um, his, his organization, Runaway. And, you know, the goal is that they'll log on to Sandbox with their, their profiles and they'll have this little avatar sitting there just ready to help people. Um, you know, and then I think we'll we'll do things like maybe some guided meditation or maybe like a, you know, a metaverse yoga. Um, maybe we'll have some artwork up and have, have different exhibitions, but you know, we're, we're trying to create a space where like, if, if people feel anxious or alone or 
um, are hurting, that maybe they would think like, hey, I'm going to head over to Happiness House and I'm going to have a place where I'm cared for. And, you know, our hope there is like build a community, you know, have a really honest and active discussion about what mental health and mental wellness looks like and hopefully make a make a beautiful corner of of the metaverse so we're looking forward to sandbox um going live with their game and and you know putting up this little plot of land and seeing seeing how we can help people my goodness um i want to take a whirlwind in that for sure because uh, as you know, social media is a lot. And that's quite really reassuring to hear that you're looking after that part of the digital world as well. Thanks. Um, Josh, are you ever going to sell your ape? <laughs> that's a good question. Someone asked me what the price for my my forever ape is. And I, th I threw a number out, like it was like $10 million for my ape right now. Um, so if anyone wanted to put that <laughs> offer on OpenSea or, or send me an offer, like I would be very tempted to accept it. Um, All right. But 10 um, million to give up your values. Is that what you're telling me, Josh? <laughs> I'll get a new ape. Um, <laughs> or I'll, maybe I'll keep the mutant. Um, um, or you get me one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hey, I'll give you a referral if, if you can help me find a, a seller. Yeah, but, there you go. See, this is the nature of friendships, no matter where the digital world takes you. There we go. Um, but, I, you know, I'm not that type of person who thinks that, like, nothing's for sale. Um, because I think, you know, it's easy to be like, I'd never sell this. And then once once you really start thinking about, like, wow, okay, like, that's enough to, to retire comfortably, right? So is that yeah. you know that's enough to kind of like work on some of the passion things that i care about and you know have yeah. a real impact ph yeah. philanthropically so like and you know uh, yeah sorry and and you know josh i can see that whatever you're giving to the community now that's going to be with the legacy that you hold within the digital realm yeah that's that's the hope yeah um so i you know at, i think at the same time like i've already generated some in some revenue from my ape using the commercial rights that, that I got from owning this, um, this NFT. And so Michael was like, I'm not just concerned with like, okay, when do I sell this ape? But I'm more interested in like, how do I make a generational intellectual property that is able to bring in revenue without just um, having to sell it? So one example is um, my ape, Maui Prime, is collaborating with um, the musician Aloe Black to release an NFT um, through this new uh, music marketplace called Sing Market. And, um, you know, Aloe and I, you know, agreed on a, a certain revenue share um, because I'm putting in my ape and he's putting in his music and, and his, his artistry and um, we're going to work together to promote this new music producer, Maui Prime, this virtual artist. And, um, you know, I'm going to make more off that than, you know, definitely whatever my ape cost, but like long-term... You know, I'm much more interested in something sustainable than holding something and flipping it and, you know, losing out on uh, on the club. But I, but I'm also like, um, I think sell shaming, which is something that happens where people are like, oh, you sold too early. Like, I think that's really awful, right? Because everybody has their own circumstances. And, you know, I just saw one of my fellow apes like um, sold their ape to buy a house, right? Um, just the other day. And like, I want to celebrate that, you know, and if I was encouraging people I to I love hold, the success stories on NFTs in, on Twitter. Absolutely. Yeah. And this is like life changing, right? Um, yeah. So if I encourage people to hold, it's because I want them to reach a place where they can change their lives for them and their families. Um, and and at the same time, like everybody gets off, gets off the rocket whenever you need to get off. And so um, markets are volatile, especially with something like, NFTs that are, aren't um, aren't always easily liquid. And so everybody makes their decision based on what they need to do. Um, I'm fortunate enough that like I have money coming in from other sources that I don't need to sell my ape and I can hold it indefinitely and, and hopefully build something great with it. Digital ownership is no joke, yo. Um, <laughs> that's wonderful. And, and, you know, as we wrap up this conversation from that, you know, uh, Tell our audience where they can keep up with your eight business and, and how they can keep up with you in general. Where can people find you? 
Thanks so much. So I spend most of my time on Twitter and my at is Beijing Doe, which um, I used to live in Beijing and I, I started a blog at the time, which was like, you know, Doe means bean in, in Chinese. So it's B-E-I-J-I-N-G-D-O-U. Um, so you can follow me on Twitter. Um, if you'd like to keep up with the Happiness House, our Twitter out there is HH Metaverse. Um, so you can keep up with um, when we're launching and, and find out more about our project. And yeah, I'll see you all in the metaverse at some point, but happy to hang out on Twitter too. Cool. Yeah, we'll definitely post the link so people can uh, keep up with you. Josh, look, truly a thought leader in the space, a man who is never tired of saying, I wish I had bought more. Thank you so much for coming on Real Vision today. Thank you.